This is not a filter. This is air pollution. Sick level of air pollution today. Like basically the haze filter. Let's see what we got here. Do I have my home? It's pretty gross today. I don't have my pollution app on that phone. It is bad today. Hello. Why pollution in the morning? Oh no, no, trust me. It's going to get much worse later in the day. As uh, all the cars start driving around and the sun comes up and traps this in, uh, this afternoon could be pretty gross. Unless we get a good breeze or rainstorm or something like that. I think we're going to be coughing. My son has soccer practice this afternoon, but well, that's going to be pretty gross. Is that... I'm actually kind of above the pollution right now. It's pretty low right now. I don't wear a mask. Uh, I'm not sure we'll do noodles or we'll do fish and chips today. Hey, Seattle. Uh, the pollution... Yeah, well, he lives down low. Nah, not McDonald's. Um, this pollution is primarily local. Um, cars, ships, coal power plants. It's not from China. When in the winter months, it's from China. And in the summer, we get local pollution sometimes. When there's a bad storm off the coast of Taiwan or something, it backs up all the air. The air we just sort of have an air pocket over the city this week. So all the city's pollution is kind of just backing up and stuck. Can't really get it. I know we run filters in our house for just this reason. Because it is pretty gross. today. It's a grandma funk. So let's keep moving up higher. Up here on the peak it's a little bit clearer. I mean that's why you can see some of the tops of the buildings but not the bottoms of the buildings because the street level pollution is much more significant. Roadside pollution. What about 1,400 feet? Yeah, we did put the drone video up this morning on my YouTube channel, Penguin 6. So we were flying around here yesterday when it was a bit clearer than it is today. Now this is the top of Mount Victoria Peak. The Great Wall is up by Beijing. Mongolia, it's about a five hour flight from here. Yeah, mostly local today. Can't blame China every day, but we try. Good thing they scrapped the Tesla tax waiver so we can have more cars here. Well, it's not DJI that needs more work, it's me that needs more work to make the movements less jerky. They have a cinema mode I could have enabled that would have made it smoother, but I'm too lazy. No, I don't need to be fluent in Chinese, you just speak English here in Hong Kong. I used my DJI Mavic yesterday. Yeah, I remember going back to the US and opening the window and being like, oh wow. Cinema mode isn't as responsive though, so um, you can crash into things easier. I don't know what the pollution level is because I have the pollution app on this phone and I can't really access it while broadcasting. Oh, I'm kind of hungry. So we haven't had breakfast yet. We had two lunches yesterday. Um, why did they do that? Because the BMW and Audi and Mercedes uh, lobbyist uh, convince them to get rid of it for Tesla. This is the tallest mountain on Hong Kong Island, but it's not 
the tallest mountain in Hong Kong. That's over in Kowloon. You can't see it today. It's shrouded in fog and mist and haze. Yeah, a lot of people fall asleep listening to me. That's how boring I am. Eighty-seven on the index. Well, I don't trust the Hong Kong index. I prefer my app, which tells you what it is by American or Western standards. Though even though, even the U.S. standards are actually quite lax compared to, say, the World Health Organization. Yeah, I don't have my YouTube voice on. Someone said that, you know, some of the most successful YouTubers all have a YouTube voice. Yeah, a YouTube voice. But uh, I keep that turned off most of the time. Especially since I really haven't had the traffic the last month or two. I can't turn the Midwest voice off. It's just almost always on thing. The tallest building that you saw was the IFC Tower, IFC 2. That was in the movie Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and the movie Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, if you watch those movies. But on the other side of the harbor, you might have been able to make out the ICC building, which is actually taller, but it was hidden in the fog and the pollution today. I think the ICC is the 11th tallest building in the world. It used to be 9th, but then Shenzhen opened two buildings last year. International Finance Center. Uh, IFC 1 is the Four Seasons Hotel, I think. And IFC 2 is mostly banks. And then there's the IFC Mall, which is a very high-end shopping mall with an Apple store and some fancy groceries. I walk you through IFC a lot. It's just down in the neighborhood. Uh. So now we got to go down the mountain, yeah? Do you have to wear a mask? No. How do you get treated in this area? Uh, I get treated fine. Just like anybody else, basically. Most people leave me alone. Don't really bother me. My day is just starting. It's only um, 9.17 in the morning, yeah? So it's 9.17 a.m. on a Wednesday morning. And let's see. I got up about 5.45. My son came into the bedroom and fell asleep on top of my wife and myself. Just sort of stretched out on both of us. And, and I got up. And yeah, yeah, the East Coast is 12 hours behind us. So today we've got, well, we're going to get lunch. Got a little bit of work to do on my web project. Not much, it'll only take about 20 minutes. And then uh, I've got a whole bunch of Periscope rewinds I've got to get up to the YouTube channel, Penguin 6. Temp is about 75 to 78 today. It's actually pretty warm today. And this afternoon, after lunch, we've got soccer at about 3.30 with the skids. And uh, so I think we can do fish and chips today. I think fish and chips is probably what we're going to have today. Ninety-five. Yeah, it doesn't get that hot here. It doesn't get over ninety-five that often. This is really, really muggy. My shoe is squeaking. Uh, it's a fish and chip place called Hooked. Hooked HK. Hooked Hong Kong. Where I go once or twice a week. It's pretty good. It's really good, actually. Columbus. Hey, how's it going, Tiffany? Welcome back to Hong Kong. I think I'll be in Ohio this summer. I think we're going to go north through uh, Michigan and Canada, skipping Ohio this year. We're driving from San Francisco to New York this summer. 
So if you want to see my uh, reverse culture shock, be sure to watch in the month of July as I drive across country 5,000 miles with three family, two kids, and a minivan. It's going to be pretty insane. We're going to see, we're going to see Yosemite, we're going to see the Grand Canyon, we're going to see um, Yellowstone, Devil's Tower, Battle of Little Bighorn, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois. Notre Dame, Niagara Falls, and Washington, D.C. I will be in Vegas for a, basically just to sleep one night, I think. I'm not quite really sure if I'll, if I'll sleep in Vegas or sleep outside of Vegas. I've been to Vegas so many times. Kids are 8 and 11. They've never been in a car for more than 30 minutes in their life. So five hour days in the car, seven hour days in the car, that's gonna be eye opening for them. I'm hoping to teach them French this summer. I think we're gonna be doing lots of French lessons in the car. <laughs> Joliet, and yeah, we might go through Joliet. I'm not sure if we'll go through Joliet or we'll go through Indiana. We're going to Notre Dame. Uh, from we're going to be in downstate Illinois. We're going to be in St. Louis, and then we're going to cut across to my father's house in East Central Illinois. And then we're going to cut up to Notre Dame. So we'll either go through Joliet, up 57, or we're going to cut over to Indianapolis and see someone in Indy, and then cut up. I'm really worried about my weight loss or gain. You know, eating junk food for three weeks in a car, no chance to exercise. It's going to be a bit mental, I suspect. Over the fourth, I'm probably going to miss it. US 31 is kind of awful. Yes, I've done it before. I went to Notre Dame for law school, so I have transited through Indiana a few times. It's a little uninteresting. Depends if our friend's in India. If our friend's not in India, then we'll just go 57 over to the tollway and just come across. While her loyal sons are marching onward to victory. Yeah, we're getting psyched up for the view. Psyched up for our trip. There wasn't much of a view back there. We're starting to get the view again because the trees are falling apart. Lots of pollution today. It's pretty gross. So for those who don't know why I was humming the Notre Dame fight song or singing, it's because we're going to be in Notre Dame this summer for a day or so. Going to visit the law school I went to. Met my wife at law school in Notre Dame. Going to show the kids around, get some junk food, and then head off. Leave Notre Dame, make our way into Canada, and see see our old nanny, my kid's former nanny from the Philippines. Was our nanny here in Hong Kong? Now lives in Toronto. So we're going to go visit her. Then we're going to go see Niagara Falls. I graduated law school in 1997. That was a long time ago, 20 years ago, Jesus. Ooh. I'm 
Notre Dame's changed a lot in the last 20 years. I mean, whole entire roads I used to drive on are no more. They've been replaced by buildings and stuff. Eight. That was a while back. Wow. Yeah, there's another new stadium upgrade. I was there when uh, the old stadium was upgraded, you know, the massive upgrade. I was actually there for the first game. It was Notre Dame versus Michigan with this guy named Tom Brady playing quarterback for Michigan as Notre Dame beat them in their first game in the new remodeled stadium. Now I understand the stadium is being remodeled again. We'll see it when we get there. Huh. That's a big dump. Tram's on his way up. Charleston for school. We will, I'm not going to be able to walk that much, I don't think, on the hike, but we will have some stops to let the kids unwind every few hours, I suspect. We're going to go to Wall Drug. This is pollution today, yes. It's pretty gross. It's a good thing I'm wearing yesterday's clothes, though. That's one advantage of wearing the same thing every day is I can just flip on yesterday's clothes early in the morning. I haven't showered yet, so when I get home, I take a shower and change into something new. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bond so much, we'll probably punch each other. <laughs> Radioactivity, not here really. We're in Hong Kong and China, you know. Those workers are working on landslide prevention. Uh, they're constantly gluing the walls together so that there's no uh, rocks or anything falling down. And so they're working on some landslide stuff. There's a tram. I, I know I don't have to eat badly, it's that I want to eat badly. Do you know what it's like to live in a land without Dairy Queens? <laughs> and no Jimmy John's? Or no Chipotle? No Wendy's? No Frosties? Ah, going back to the United States is a chance to rediscover my disgusting youth and eat all that crap. Because when I get back here, it's noodles and salads. Are oh, there are a lot of strangers in Hong Kong. I don't know, pretty strange. Um, Vegas to Hong Kong isn't probably a direct route. You'll have much better luck going L.A. to Hong Kong or something like San Francisco to Hong Kong. Oh, this guy can't figure out how to make the turn. I wonder if I should help him. Indiana is the land of Dairy Queen. The statue of Bruce Lee is over in Kowloon on the other side of that pollution. You can't really see it right now. To go up there. Now he's figured it out. Maybe. Yep, you got a backup to go up this turn. I haven't been mistaken shaking like 20 years. There you go. See if you back up, you do this five point turn. You can get yourself up that mountain. You know, I wanted to go to Dog and Suds. That's a real Illinois thing. There's not many of those left. It's a root beer or drive-in. What's the other one? A&W? I'm going to go to drive-in. i got to go to drive-in. Or in Vegas. So flying from Vegas to Hong Kong, I don't know if it's a direct flight, but you can get to Hong Kong very cheap. I mean, round trip airfare to Hong Kong is low as 600 bucks sometimes. 
Sonic. Yeah, I don't really like Sonic, but A and W would be good. I like root beer. You know, diet root beer is probably the most close to the original soft drink, Portola in Illinois. I'm not sure that is. I'm going to Jimmy John's in Illinois. That's for sure. I'm going to the original Jimmy John's in Charleston, Illinois. You know, I've been in and out. Sorry, California. I like Five Guys better. My kids agree. My kids are like, I don't get it, Dad. What's so big deal about in and out and it's a California thing. I know Californians, that's just like blasphemy. But uh, Five Guys being an East Coaster. Five Guys is actually from Arlington, Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. That's where the first one opened. Five Guys is in California now, too. I introduced my mother-in-law to Five Guys. She's like, I don't like hamburgers, but then she inhaled like a double. She was like, oh, that's good. People do talk up in and out. I haven't been to a steak and shake in so long. Or Shake Shack. I was in the, I was in the New York Shake Shack a couple years ago. It's okay. It's okay. I think I'd probably have to eat a couple more to, to really do a thing. Is it harder to breathe today? Not today. Jimbo's in New York. No. Haven't been to New York in a few years. You know, as this Krispy Kreme is in Singapore. So we had Krispy Kremes last week when we were in Singapore. Not a, big, not a big chili fan. I know of it. D.C. has Ben's Chili Bowl, which is sort of like the celebrity chili place in D.C. Singapore had Nando's. D.C. has Nando's. I suspect we'll have Nando's. We're going to go, I think, to be honest, we might slip through Kansas City just to get barbecue for lunch and steak for dinner. I mean, if I'm going to be in Kansas City, you got to freaking eat steak. My wife will be like, let's have Chinese food. I'm like, no, we're in Kansas City. We're having a steak. Um, the wilderness hike wouldn't last long after the snakes bit me. And I'd have to be medevaced off the uh, jungle with like a cobra bite. I'm not going to do that. Wawa's, Wawa's has good donuts. Funny, we went back to the United States, and of course we were jet lagged. So my kids and I, we went to a Wawa's at like two in the morning, and you know, the woman's like, "Why are your kids up at two a.m.?" Like, we're from Hong Kong, okay? So this is like two in the afternoon for us. Give us a break. There's no Wawa's here. There's no. There's no anything. I mean, we had the big stuff like McDonald's and Burger King and Pizza Hut, but we don't have Wendy's. We don't have Arby's, Chipotle, Jimmy John's, Nando's. Nope. 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 Um, Taco Bell, no. We have 7-Eleven, we have bajillions of 7-Elevens, but they don't have, they have some stuff. Some of them have Frosties, or not Frosties, but Slurpees, but not all of them. We have quite a bit of Western food, we just don't have all the chain Western food that you have. I mean, we've got burger joints that, frankly, are really, really good. I had a really good burger last night, if you look at my YouTube, but, you know, it was 20 bucks American. Yeah, so if you look at that YouTube video I put up this morning, my second lunch last night cost $20 American. That was a burger fries and a Diet Coke. It's not that I run out of ideas, I just try to keep it. I just kind of don't really like to try new stuff that's going to waste that $20 for a burger that sucks. I get pissed. So I usually find something I like. I go to new places every now and then. I mean, let's see. You know, this So far this year, we discovered the Korean place. That's on our thing. The chicken place, Perry Perry Chicken Place, is kind of on a rotation. Um, what are the places that we've been eating this year? It's new. I need to go back to Khao Ki. I haven't been to Khao Ki. I've been to Khao Ki once this year, the noodle joint, because it's so dang hard to get a seat. But I really should get over to Khao Ki more. Yeah, Diet Coke supposedly causes all the problems of the world. But again, it's all moderation, you know, how much you think. I gave up Diet Coke for a couple of years. I've started drinking it again, and I really should cut back. So I, we'll start today. Khao Ki is a noodle joint. That's a bit crazy. That's a bit crazy kind of chili. Flying Pan is our diner for pancakes and French toast. So we're coming up to the $193 million house. Where the workmen are actually working on it now. We do have Yoshinoya. I don't go to Yoshinoya a lot because it's a lot of rice. And maybe we can go to Yoshinoya. 
So we're trying to get rid of this uh, weight spike we picked up in Singapore. We trended up two pounds after Singapore, about one kilogram after a few days in Singapore. And it's not just water weight. We definitely put on something. So we gotta, we gotta get rid of that. Too much breakfast. They had the breakfast buffet in the hotel. It was crazy. We don't have Pet Express. We have Yankee Express. No, I'm kidding. I don't think I've been to a Panda Express in 15 years. No, I scratched that. I have once in an airport because the kids wanted rice. So we bought this, we were flying from, I think it was Washington to Tokyo. And we knew that the airplane food would suck. So we bought like the most humongous container of rice possible. And the kids ate rice on the flight. It was actually a pretty good idea. And they had their little seaweed seasoning packets. I don't know if you guys do seaweed seasoning, these, these little packets you can like mix them up into the rice. I've heard of Big Bowl, I've never been to it. Um, the kids don't like the flight, and they're really already, already annoyed about the flight. I don't have an anxiety attack about gaining or losing a pound or so, but when my trend, my trend line goes up or down a pound or two, then I get a little bit more annoyed. Because your body, I mean, my body fluctuates probably three pounds a day. My three to four pounds a day. My evening weigh-in is three to four pounds different than my morning weigh-in. I did hear about that. Um, this morning I stepped on the scale, I was 158. Uh, 58.7 pounds. My goal weight is 153. I've been floating around 156 before we went to Singapore. My trend line is now 158. Um, no, 150. Yeah, 150. It was down to 156, and then it went up to 158. I'm five foot nine and a quarter. I was 208 pounds, and I was obese, mathematically, technically obese. So I lost 60 pounds, and after uh, that, I've gained back, oh, eight to nine pounds over the last three years. Hey, Atlantic City, which I've really been fighting to go. It's mostly, I've been able to keep the weight off. It's when I go on trips, when I go to like the United States or I go to France or I go somewhere, I always gain weight on these trips. I went to Taiwan, I gained weight. I went to Singapore, I gained weight. Honestly, this trip, I'm taking my scale with me. I'm taking my, my wireless We Things body analyzer on the trip. And we're gonna weigh ourselves daily on the trip. No more like surprises. Whenever I came back from trips before, it'd be like a big surprise how much weight I gained. So this one, we're going to be able to monitor our weight as we drive across the country. Fattening food, but also just the lifestyle of driving everywhere and not walking. And it can be a good thing. How do you lose 60 pounds? I ate less and I moved more. I kid you not, it was nothing that exciting. I used Lose It, the calorie counting app, and I reduced my calorie intake. And if I wanted more calories, I started exercising by walking, which you see me doing now, or occasionally riding an exercise bicycle. But basically, I ate less and I moved more. And over the course of nine months, I dropped 60 pounds. I credit the We Things scale as having a huge influence. It became like a video game every morning, because that thing doesn't lie and it doesn't forget doesn't fudge things. There's not much surroundings here, yeah? There's a tennis court here. But the city skyline is hidden all that. You know, it's 50 on Weight Watchers, that's good. There's a whole old hospital here. This is Victoria Hosp Maternity Wing. This was only for Europeans. Um, well, when I started the thing, I was at like 2,200 calories or something like that. I can't even remember. And then eventually that worked down to a daily intake of about 2,000 calories. Because I'm trying to lose weight, I keep it at about 1,800 calories a day. My 
goal is not to eat back the calories I get. Hockey, yeah, they have ice hockey or field hockey. They have both kinds here. I get between a four and 1,000 calorie bonus from exercise, though I rarely eat more than 2,400 calories a day. Even if I have a big bonus, I try to keep the calorie count around 2,000 or less. This is Hong Kong in the People's Republic of China. This is where I live, and I take you guys for hikes every day here because this is how I stay thin and how I get out and keep my brain from falling out of my head. It's good to get out and hear the birds. Do I eat dessert? Not with the meal, but sometimes at about 8 o'clock I will have about 100 calories, 120 calories of something either 120 calories of potato chips or 120 calories of ice cream. So I usually do have a little snack at the end of the day. Um, we do have, I have dry, we have Dryer's ice cream, we have Haagen-Dazs, we have a few others. We have some weird ice cream, a lot of Japanese ice cream, Korean ice cream, Italian. This is a pretty view. This is my. This is the Central Green Trail, also known as Chatham Path, where the people. They're not on this path because this is a. This is an old rickshaw path, an old uh, sedan chair path connecting the peak with Central Hong Kong. Now everybody up there has a car. Now they, they have drivers, honestly. Uh, there are very, very few people, except tourists and hikers and nannies and whatnot, walking the dog. So this is a pretty isolated hike for me every morning. I'll probably see oh, maybe a half a dozen people between now and the next road. So what have we seen, two already? Yeah, probably less than a half a dozen, unless there's a group coming up. They always look miserable coming up. Lots of gelato in Vegas. Oh. I've been to some good places in Vegas off the strip. I mean, I still stay at casinos. I'll stay at Red Rocks or I'll stay somewhere else far away from the Strip. If I do stay on the Strip, I stay at like Paris or, or something like that. I have never seen a rickshaw on this. In the old days, though, sedan chairs traversed this path. A sedan chair was two guys carrying a chair over their shoulders. It took six teams of sedan chair drivers to get from the ground to the peak. Portion sizes are a bit mental. This is actually a rest area for the sedan chairs when they were coming up. This is where one team would switch over with the next team. I remember ordering silver dollar pancakes in the United States and they came back, they were bigger than McDonald's pancakes. And I was just like, have you guys ever actually seen a silver dollar? Wednesday just sort of got started, yeah. I'm going to periscope some of it. I'll do some YouTube videos every day on my trip. Uh, no, this is where I live. I live here in Hong Kong. I'm taking a trip to the United States, though, this summer. I'll be traveling across the U.S. for about five weeks. Actually, we'll only be traveling about three weeks. The first two weeks, we're probably going to stay put. That corner is always very spotty connection. There is an eclipse. I don't know if I'll be there uh, when the eclipse happens, though. I think it's late July or August. I'm not sure. That would be cool to see, though. Uh, I do dad stuff here. Take care of my kids. We're at school right now. <clears throat> Another dad. Late August. Yeah, I'm going to miss it. Oh, what cities? Well, we're going to land in San Francisco, we're going to make our way to Yosemite, then Vegas, then over to the Grand Canyon, then up through Salt Lake City to Yellowstone, and then over to uh, Little Bighorn, Devil's Tower, cut down probably to Kansas City, then over to St. Louis, go see my dad in Illinois, then up to Notre Dame, then over to Toronto, 
Niagara Falls, then back down to Washington, D.C., and then we'll finish up in New York City a few days later, drop the car, get on a plane, fly back to Hong Kong. Something like that. This is a trail. I'm not military. Uh, it's going to be about 5,000 miles. Uh, about 5,000 miles. We're going to take about two to three weeks. Um, haven't really sussed out exactly. No, no, actually, renting the car is only about 1,200 US dollars. There's no, if you drop at an airport, there's no drop charge. If you rent from an airport and drop at an airport, you don't have a drop charge usually. Reminds me, though, I do have to pick up the car soon. I have to sort it out. If we, we originally were going to go to New York, we were going to go to Boston, then New York, then DC, and then fly back from DC. But you can't fly direct from DC to Hong Kong. But now part of me is saying maybe we should go from DC. We could stop in Japan for a day or two, see some friends in Tokyo, and then uh, yeah, even though it's one way, they don't mind as long as it's airport to airport. It's pretty cool. Kids are going to be grumpy, but you know. Being grumpy and bored is part of life. So, you know, teaching them how to deal with it. Uh, I don't know what airline yet. We, we've got enough air miles. We could go for free on CAFE, but we actually found some pretty cheap prices on some other airlines. So we're debating, you know, do we spend a quarter million air miles and go for free, or do we just spend, you know, 2,500 US dollars? Yeah, I saw that this morning Trump had fired the guy. I guess he was waiting for an excuse. And the Washington, honestly, when I saw the Washington Post story last night before I went to bed, I pretty much knew what was going to happen. That that was a uh, that was a file story. When you have an enemy in Washington, you create a file, and you start to accumulate everything you have negative about that person. And then, when the moment is right, you dump that file, and the snowball keeps going. I, I'm so out of American politics right now, I don't really care. I mean, he's going to go anyway. Nobody knew, nobody thought he was going to stay. Boy, a lot of rocks have been falling lately in this rain. Yeah, this is Central Green Trail, Chatham, Chatham Path. And this is the house you can rent for 33,000 US dollars a month. 33 grand American. I'm going to end up at my house. I live down here on May Road. Not in this house, not the $33,000 house. My house is a lot cheaper than that. But for $33,000 US dollars per month, you can get that six bedroom, 6,000 square foot house. Um, when I'm a permanent resident, which should be coming soon, actually, I will have the right to vote in the Hong Kong elections. Not that it matters that much because the government is still appointed by Beijing, basically. Hey, Vancouver. Yeah, it is pocket change for some, not for me. You gotta remember though that some of these bankers, they're making a million US dollars or two million US dollars a month for their banks. You know, they are generating tremendous profits every month for their banks. So for the bank to turn around and say, you know what, here's thirty thousand dollars, go rent someplace nice. Well it's just part of business. Of course he has the power to fire him. It's not independent. Is it cheap to live here? Well, the average family in my son's international school spends $11,500 U.S. a month in rent. So that's $11,000 U.S. dollars per month, uh, $14 for a gallon of milk, $10 for a box of Cheerios, $8 for a gallon of gas. Uh, don't speak Chinese, speak English here. The average expat in the international finance community is on about you know, $175,000 US dollars a year base salary plus bonuses, which can basically be as much as double the salary. So most people in the circle I live in are easily making a quarter million or more a year plus benefits and stuff. So it's kind of weird. That's not to say I am representative of Hong Kong people in any way, shape or form. <laughs> Many, most people are getting by on much, much less. In fact, most expats are getting by on much less. I live in a bubble. Howdy. My name is Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. 
quarter million a year is not a much for a year. A quarter million a year is actually difficult in some parts of the U.S. Actually, I mean, New York City on a quarter million a year isn't exactly a cakewalk if you've got a family. There's some more people. So what's this make? Three, four, five, six. Oh, there's a bunch. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people. Almost a dozen people today. My wife works for a big bank. I try to be grounded. That's the thing I worry about my kids, is how do I teach them to be normal when most of their friends fly business class just to travel? Well, I mean, if you live in smaller buildings and you eat local food and stuff, it's easy. I mean, the average Hong Konger makes 3,000 US dollars, 2,000 US dollars a month. You know, my wife talks to all the banks. Bank of America isn't that really big here. JP Morgan has a pretty big presence, but yeah, I mean, the kids in my son's school, they, they, they talk about their summer vacations like, oh, how was your flight? Did you have to turn right or turn left? It's just like, oh God. Turn right means fly economy. Turn left means business or first class. Whoa, the golf cart's coming. So the guy who lives up here has his own golf cart chauffeur. So I gotta get out of the way. Sure. Uh, about 20 bucks. Um, it was at 1,400 feet. Now I'm down to about six or 800 feet. So the altitude, it doesn't really affect me. It's not that high. Here goes the golf cart. Oh. Yeah, well, when you pay $33,000 a month, you get some benefits like a private chauffeur to take you to your house. What is the nanny cooking? I don't know what the nanny's cooking today for dinner. I would suspect probably Asian food tonight. Maybe tofu and fish. I think the boys are, I think she might have, she might have, today's Wednesday. And there's a farmer's market today, so she's probably gonna go down and get something. Maybe she'll get a fish. Minimum wage in Hong Kong is 35 Hong Kong dollars, which is about four or five US dollars an hour. But like I said, I spent $14 for a gallon of milk, 14 US for a gallon of milk. And I'll probably have a salad. I mean, you gotta understand the taxes take a tremendous amount of money. If you make a quarter million a year, you're gonna be paying a third of that in taxes, maybe 40% of that in taxes. And then uh, you send your kids to private school, there goes another 20 or 30,000 at least per kid. And then, you know, your mortgage, if you're living in a nice neighborhood, kaboom, it can really suck up the stuff. Oh, we'll keep in touch with our nanny probably. We've kept in touch with our previous nanny quite a bit. We don't. Our second nanny, though, um, she sort of disconnected. We try to keep, we've had, let's see, we had two nannies in the US, and we've had three nannies here. And we're still in touch with three of the five, but one's still working, of course. But the other two just sort of disappeared. Um, you have to understand the nannies, they change their phone numbers and email accounts. Many of them are very, very poor. Uh, I'm not, paying, not really paying attention to the U.S. craziness. Our son's first nanny lives in China now. We still keep in touch with her. Our second nanny we kind of lost touch with. We tried to keep in touch with her, send her pictures and stuff, but uh, they just they disappear. Bonsoir, France. Hope you're having a good night over there. You're in Hong Kong right now in the mid-levels where I live. We're walking to my house as we do every day. Then we're gonna take a shower, or change clothes, go get some lunch. Probably fish and chips today. Maybe we'll surprise you, I don't know. Bad connection. Does she buy food to cook her money? Or we give her money to buy food. We let her eat our food too, it's no big deal. Uh, we'd rather have her healthy than starving. She sends almost all of her money home to the Philippines. She has a daughter in the Philippines. So I will scope lunch. It'll probably be, what time is it? 10 o'clock, so probably an hour or so. It's 9.54 here in Hong Kong. I'll probably, well, if I go to Fish and Chips, it's gotta be noon, yeah? But if I go for noodles, I could do it at 11. 
Maybe I go have noodles and then I have fish and chips. Maybe I'll have two lunches. So if I do that, that'd probably be about 11.30. So I think in about an hour and a half, I'll be 90 minutes, I'm gonna be back online on our way to lunch, wherever it might be. Probably hooked. If you're in Hong Kong, you can always come over to Hooked and meet up with me. It's a lovely walk. Um, yeah, we are watching our diet, but you know, we've been watching our diet for years now. We, we count every single calorie and have for three years now as we lost 60 pounds in our original diet. We had a burger last night for second lunch. Uh, we were gonna have a burger for dinner tonight, but then my son's football schedule got rearranged. So if you, want, if you saw my YouTube vlog that's up, there was a tree that fell down. This is what the tree did. Tree snapped this bar. That's what's left of the tree up there. So that giant tree fell down here. It's on my uh, video blog, YouTube Penguin 6. This whole road was closed yesterday morning. We had to get the kids to school some other way. It's pretty massive. Trees fall all the time here. Sometimes they kill people. So this is a little optimistic, yeah? Hello, my wallet is lost. If you find it, give me a call. Good luck with that. I mean, there are quite a few honest people here but it's not everybody. Does my wife make $5 million a month? No. I think they make $5 million a year. Not even $5 million in Hong Kong. Maybe. I don't know. $5 million in Hong Kong would be 600000 US. That's a lot. There's home. It's this tiny little building. You ever spend with your wife? Do you love her? Of course, I'm with my wife every single day. Sometimes I have lunch with her, but she's usually really busy, especially this month. Her fiscal year ends July 1st, so all of her bank's deals have to be finished by June 30th, which means, well, chaos, chaos. I'm going to get hit by this car. Anyway, so guys, in about 90 minutes, we're going to come back and we're going to take you to lunch. We'll see where we go. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you guys very soon.